Hey, and welcome to my debut um, episode of Talking MMT, where I basically talk about, uh, well, MMT, obviously, and where I will hopefully be conducting interviews with the likes of uh, Warren Mosler, Stephanie Kelton, possibly, um, Steve, uh, um, Steve, uh, Mr. Uh, Real Progressive, um, God, I can't remember his last name for something for the life of me. I don't know why he's on the moment. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep working on it. But anyway, um, anyway, so I am a very much a student at MMT. Um, I've been so obsessed with it. I can't remember when I actually started uh, uh, learning it or being interested in it and having my interest build and build and build. Then I uh, then I basically uh, started watching a um, a uh, a uh, person that is an Australian ec uh, economist. Um, where is that book? I can't remember his name. Um, Bill Mitchell. There we go. That's what it is. Um, Bill Mitchell, and uh, he was interviewed on uh, as funny as it happens, uh, the real progressive. And um, he said he came out and said that there was going to be a online course, which I'm actually studying right now, uh, and it's at uh, uh, edX course. Um, so far, so good, I think, but uh, it's a four week course, and I started on I want to say. Uh, March 4th. So uh, it hasn't been that uh, well. I didn't realize it was the 15th already. So actually, it's been about a week and a half so far, give or take. It feels like it's been like two or three days. It's been like going really fast. Anyway, um, and I may or may not be going for the certificate, but there is a certificate for, I want to say it's a 46 bucks or so. Um, but so far, the course has been. Really cool. Really, uh, it's been interactive. Um, I sometimes choose not to be interactive because I'm more of a loner in that way. I want to just want to learn what I learn and pass the test and, and get on with life. But uh, some of the requirements is to uh, be uh, in, in the middle of discussion groups and all that stuff. So I've been trying to get more into that, but whatever. Um, anyway, so so far from what I'm understanding, not only from Bill Mitchell, but also from uh, Warren Moser is essentially um country like the u.s country like once in japan uh china i want to say china uh, uh uk and canada are all um sovereign nations uh sovereign countries that have their own currency they don't borrow from anybody in regards to uh borrow outside of their cur uh, the currency uh so uh since they're able to uh, pay their bills in uh, like here uh, USD. Um, they can pay his bills with with the same currency that it issues. Um, so that means it's the issuer. Now us as normal citizens who maybe work jobs, not during the pandemic, I would assume. But um, anyways, we are the users of said um, uh, money, the you know, currency. Um, so because uh, the currency is issued by the government and by the Fed, um, the Fed has to feed in, basically has to uh, feed in cash, which a lot, a lot of times uh, it taxes out of the economy to keep one, as far as I'm understanding so far, um, in the comments, you can tell me to go somewhere else with my opinion, but um, from, what I, from what I've been understanding so far and again i'm still a student um and will be for my life really as far as the, as far as this, uh particular subject goes um basically in order to keep inflation down uh they tax it out uh, they tax that out of the uh, out of the uh, system and i guess they used to literally burn it uh because it's no no longer valid it's no longer a uh, currency that is uh, is usable um and uh from what I've gathered, uh, from what Warren Moser has repeatedly said, that the debt clock that you always see, that's basically money that has not been taxed back out yet. It's money that is still, you know, in savings accounts of 
people who own who uh, who own treasuries uh, to the Fed. The treasuries is basically um, a savings account, uh, and uh, once it, once the person who owns the, sa- the the treasury wants to cash it out, and they then transfer it from their uh, from the treasury department or from bonds into their or savings account. Excuse me, savings account into the reserves. The Fed has the same thing. That's why if you go onto um, onto the website, you'll 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 see if you look up uh, orders, it'll say how much money has been ordered to be put into reserves. And if you'll notice, also, like for instance, and this is where I realized that all this stuff is actually making more sense to me. When I when I was when I was realizing that reserves is a, a savings account, and you sell the reserves, they, they sell the treasury on um, auction, and that's where they come up with the, uh, the that's when they come up with the, the rate that the that, that the, uh, the yield will the yield will be uh, for this for the savings account, essentially. Um, and again, this is I'm learning as I go. So far, I mean, more likely I will be, it will be, I will be putting it in a different way that makes more sense in regards to the topic at hand. Anyway, um, so once they sell the treasury and it goes into reserves, that's when it becomes, that's when the banks are able to quote unquote purchase it and then it goes into the, into the actual bank reserve, uh, into the banking system. Now, sometimes they'll go through, they'll go into the general public as uh, loans, uh, mortgages, stuff of that nature. Um, and sometimes they won't. Sometimes, like uh, with the stimulus packages, it will go from the Fed directly into uh, like our pockets, like our, uh, yeah, our accounts, uh, just like we're going to begin here in a moment, you know, or days, you know, 1400 bucks. That's not really enough to get this economy back up, but uh, and it's not even a start, but when you have political policies that uh, rein a lot of the uh, useful spending in where it shouldn't be, um, I think we should have been spending a lot more as far as the part goes because people need money for rent because a lot of places have gone down because of the pandemic, because there's nobody going in because they can't, you know, I mean, it's the coronavirus. Um, But because a lot of those companies are going out of business, because they can't sustain themselves, um, uh, those employees, they have to go on unemployment, and so you don't have you don't you don't have a consumer's economy like you used to have. You have basically a market uh, a a corporate uh, uh, economy, which may, basically means that the corporations out there that do get like these tax incentives, they put that money back in general stocks and uh, artificially inflating their own. Um, uh, stock uh, their own bonds, their own stocks. Um, because if you notice, uh, once uh, Jerome Powell told them to stop buying their own stocks, at least until September, the market almost crashed because of so many uh, companies that stopped buying their own stocks. So then all of a sudden you had this uh, treasury sell off because the banks were having to buy them and put them in the reserves. And all of a sudden, you had the you know, all of a sudden you had all the banks, almost every single bank that you can, that you can think of, that carry the reserves uh, or bought the reserve bought the treasuries from the Fed. Their stocks went up. I mean, their stocks went up a lot, and so that just tells me that that means they are beginning to get the the reserves. They're be, they're starting to be able to get the balance to where they can actually um, uh, loan out that money. Uh, and from my hair, there's gonna be a, maybe there's gonna be some uh, mortgages handed out here pretty soon, like really cheap mortgages, kind of like what happened in 08. Hopefully not, uh, because it's to me. And I said, and I said this a couple of days ago on the IGPS, which is uh, my original show, which you can check that out. Also, I'll put the link down below if you're interested. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I'm hoping that they don't uh, do that in regards to uh, in the um, sectors that don't have the money for it, uh, because that would just be toxic assets. Um, I'm hoping that they, generally speaking, are, I hope they do mostly small business loans, 
uh, that way you know, you'll actually be able to create the demand not only for cash but create the demand for labor. Uh, which means for every for anybody from cashiers to bartenders to restaurants be reopened stuff of that nature. And that's after um, that's after the coronavirus uh, vaccine keeps going out, keep growing out. Uh, Biden, I have to admit, is doing a better job at that. Um, but because we don't have enough people in office that know enough about MMT and and uh, understand the process and trust that process. We have too many moderates that are are saying, eh, no, this is too much. This is too, this is not, not enough, and you know, the, the middle part, like uh, Joe Manchin, like a uh, oh, what is her name, um, Senator from uh, Arizona. Then you have all the Republicans who, you know, they they all wanted to give those tax breaks to, to their to their wealthy donors, and I. I can kind of understand why at the same time it's, I mean, they, <clears throat> they're basically when they, nowadays, I'm, I only think that the reason why they did that was so that those same people could then buy treasuries, which will then invest that money into banks and other things of that nature. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that that's what they, that's what that was meant for. But otherwise, they're just being complete buttheads, and they don't want to have, they don't want uh, 50 dollars minimum wage for people, which would actually bring in about 63% of low-income workers, I think I saw in a, in a poll, um, out from poverty. Um, and will it make small, some small businesses go out of business? That depends on the quality of the product, and it depends on their clientele, because that's where the microeconomics come from come in i'm trying to learn macroeconomics mmt which apparently and it's actually made within the uh frames of uh of the online course i'm taking uh, by bill bill mitchell uh bill mitchell bill mitchell um that basically is a combination of if i got this right um uh uh chartable chartable let's see if i got that right mm. i had the uh the I was able to print out the first portion. I'm just trying to um, see if I can find that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I basically I had to um, print out the portion of this whole thing that has that and other things. I'm just trying to find find that. Maybe I put it. I think I did, yeah. Um, let's see. My, I, I call it small, uh, smaller level of the bubble or something like that. Um, let's see. Oh, oh. Uh, okay, this is it. I just need to find this part. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a combination of chartalism is what I was trying to I was trying to find and functional finance. That's what MMT is basically. It's a combination of the two. And so that I I I've, I've been trying to figure out. Uh, I've become more of a business minded kind of person. Like I know that in, like in my case, uh, every single little business quote unquote. I tried. I've done it on like no money. I've done it all with just like either borrowed. Uh, equipment and I've made my money and all of this stuff. But uh, anyway, let's see. <clears throat> but here's an introduction to uh, 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 MMT. This is uh, from the Gower Initiatives for Modern Monetary Studies. And, it, and, it, and it's entitled A Brief Instruction to Modern Monetary Theory. And it, it asks the question What is the economy? If you listen to any uh, chancellor since the late 70s, you would be forgiven for gaining the impression that it is all about debt and deficit and how the country has to live within its means and pay down its credit card. But under these conditions, inequity has soared. Public services have been defunded. The UK failed to recover its living standard by the standards post-2008 crash and has suffered the biggest drop in average real wages of any OECD country except Greece. 
while accepting that living within your means may be a good rule for households. The reality is that government like ours, with its own currency and its own central bank, is not at all like a household. The economy is a far broader subject, covering not just what the government spends, but what it spends to as private individuals and wider non-governmental sector, including how much debt we get into. After all, it was the it was private debt, not public, that caused the 2008 crash. It is time for a public to have a better understanding. Sorry, the public to have a better understanding to replace the uh, the cliches about the government having no money of its own. In a sovereign currency nation like the UK, with its own central bank, it is, in fact, the sole currency issuer. It spends is its spending is not limited by its ability to tax. MMT is not a political theory, but it describes of how money sorry how money creation works and why missing it out um, why missing it out of the economy equation leaves the classical eco- economic thinking disconnected with the real world. While the real world suffers from that disconnect in terms of unemployment, loss of key services, and environmental degradation, the conventional view is that public spending must be paid for through taxation, government sales of assets, and issuing government bonds. In other words, three through taxes now, selling off the, the family silver, now or borrowing money now at interest, which will have to be repaid in the future, which is presumed to create a burden of additional taxation for a future generation. A right-wing response to this conventional position uh, might be an austerity program to keep government spending down and privatization in order to keep taxes low, or a left-wing one, which is to say tax the rich and the multinationals much more highly because the government needs more money from the rich so it can pay for our public services. Both the right and the left wing reactions are wrong, or at least misleading. They are based on conventional view of public sector finance, which is accepted, which is accepted as being valid by many people on all shades of the political spectrum. It is a view which majority of highly credentialed uh, economists, including Nobel Prize winners, knows to be incorrect, but which many of them justify as a mechanism for imposing some restraint of politicians. They believe that if politicians knew the financial options which are actually available to them, they would abuse these freedoms, spend like drunken sailors, and wreck the economy. The sets of conventions and rules which have been applied down the last few decades, particularly since 79, have to have to a greater or lesser extent obscured the truth, which can be summarized in two laws of financial finance, public finance, excuse me. A government of one, a government with its own currency, e.g. sterling, it's not central, uh, its own central bank, e.g. Bank of England, floating exchange rate and no foreign currency debt faces no financial budget constraint at all. Two, such a government faces real and ecological constraints. As a society, we cannot run out of pounds, but we can run out of or misuse people skills, technology, infrastructure, nature, natural, and ecological resources. There are limits, but the limits are real and not financial. Governments should therefore focus on their policies of human and ecological measures, resources, excuse me, not the deficit. We have to be clear that no, that nothing in the above uh, restrain. Re, I'm sorry, restricts any policy choices that any government may make. A party intend on low state intervention, allowing private sector providers to compete for public services contracts and low tax regime, has as much right to their political stance as a stati- status 
uh, one or one which promotes subsidiarity or full public ownership. However, I also be obliged to argue their case on grounds other than affordability, sustainability, and how you've got to pay for it. Now, on this website, which is gims.gims.org.uk uh, slash MMT Basics, there is a, a, um, a video down below that has W. Kilton explaining the public purse. I want to get that out there, and it doesn't actually, it doesn't say who it's by. I don't think. Let me see if I can find that the author. Hmm. No, I don't see an actual author, but there's lots of uh, different uh, comments. But whatever. Um, anyway, there was a. Oh, that's right. I wanted to bring that up. There was a. Uh, I heard that Joe Biden wants to uh, do a a tax thing. I'm trying to find that so I can kind of go over it a little bit. If I can find that, that'd be good. No. Okay. Ah, okay. Here we go. Now, I recently realized that the limited liability, um, uh, the LLC um, corporation part, I realized that quite a few of the quote-unquote famous or infamous, as, I, as I'm trying to call them, um, our LLCs, which means Limited Liability Corporation. Now, um, according to uh, Bloomberg and according to MSN and all that other stuff, um, Biden wants to do a couple of interesting things. I'm just going to get to it now. Uh, wow, well, okay, where can I find that? I thought I found it. Um, well, okay, let's see. Oh, there we go. Uh, he wants to raise corporate tax from 28 uh, to 28 from 21, which I don't think is high enough, but whatever. Um, now, this is the important one that I like. Pairing back tax preferences for so-called pass-through businesses such as limited liability companies or partnerships raising the income on rates tax rate on individuals earning more than 400000 expanding the estate tax reach. Now, that part I'm not so sure about. Um, but, the, but, the, but the one I like is the LLC one. Um, now, if I can go see if I can find what the LLC is, I can, again, <laughs> uh, no, let's see, da, 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 no. Yeah, some of these things I should have like really kind of prepared myself for. But oh well. Okay, stuff happens to me. Let me just kind of look this stuff up here. Uh, okay, so let's see the taxes. Okay, so let's see. This is I'm trying to get this from uh, QuickBooks. Let's see, a limited liability company is a business structure that protects its owners owner or owners from being personally reliable for the business debt. I think that's how Trump got his fucking billions. Um, whether you currently operate an LLC or are thinking of turning your freelance operation into an LLC, it's important to know the tax basics and benefits of running one. Understanding all your obligations for declaring income and paying taxes at the, at, at the federal and state levels. Uh, LLC, oh, hold on, let me actually just kind of, uh, this is for single and multi-member LLCs. While sole proprietorships have just one owner by definition, LLCs can either be single or multi-member organizations. The structure of your company can affect your tax obligations. As the IRS treats single-member LLCs as sole proprietorships and multi-membership uh, member LLCs as partnerships, in some cases, LLC can opt to be treated like corporations and taxed as such. Freelance, like freelancers or self-employed uh, persons, uh, members of LLC do not have taxes automatically withheld from their incomes. While traditional employees can send tax returns just once a year, LLC members, like self-employed persons, may only may have to make 
quarterly payments to the IRS. As an owner or partner in an LLC, it's important to save money for those essential payments which obviously you know, someone like Trump, which is based on all them, they don't, I think they probably write them off anyway. Um, but anyway, it's a sales tax. Um, okay, LLC may be responsible for collecting sales tax on the products and services they sell. In the case of LLC, its members must collect any required sales tax and deliver them to the required parties because sales tax rates and policies vary by state. Businesses owners need to keep up anyway. I think you know, hopefully you check my drift on that. Let's see, tax payments and deductions. Uh, let's see, as an LLC member, your tax obligations will depend on the nature of your membership. And the LLC, if you're the only no, if you're the only owner of a single member, of the LLC will be taxed like a sole proprietor. If you are uh, one member, Okay, let's see. If your LLC has opted to be to be taxed like a corporation, then any profits will be taxed twice, akin to a C corporation. The only substantial difference is, as previously mentioned, an extra LLC tax may be imposed on your business depending on the state. Just as tax obligations will marry your role in LLC, so too will be so too will the deductions as you will be able to make. As a single member, you will make any uh, business-related deductions on Schedule C, including deductions for home office space, mileage, and travel. Now, one of my my one of our former landlords uh, used a residential uh, building, uh, one we both lived at at one time, as the business, as the headquarters, which meant, uh, as far as I, as far as I can see. Uh, he used that he used that as um like where i'm guessing where his he had a p.o box so he would have his llc his tax and all this stuff i think mailed to his p.o box but he used that address that we were living in um as a business and he actually counted four employees there now if it's i guess there's four employees that means that uh i'm not really sure what that means uh maybe uh he can look at that as more of a business um uh, location. So there you have it. Um, but anyway, my point being is, I believe if, if, if I'm learning this right, uh, the Fed obviously does, uh, does issue the money. And in order to um, keep inflation down to, I think one of the ways is taxations. Um, but I think that a lot of corporations they uh, they would invest their the tax uh, the tax write offs they would then invest that into treasuries, which meant that if they say they did like a ten year treasury and say they wanted to uh, the Fed went to them and they bought back that treasury that the money or yeah the treasury go it would go from the uh treasury person who bought it to to the bank allowing it to be savings and all this stuff um anyway i'm kind of going on a tangent because i'm again i'm i'm still learning but i kind of know the beginnings of the basics um but anyway uh, I'd like to thank you very much for uh listening uh for at the for the uh debut and this will be up shortly. Um, this will also be. Uh, th this will also go to the the the. This will go first to my uh, email uh, subscribers. So uh, if you want uh, the first crack of this, you know, hearing this, then subscribe to my channel. Um, subscribe to this channel, excuse me, and subscribe to uh, my IGPS one. Um, and the two will be in mid in mid of uh, one email. Um, the more. Uh, interest I have in this, the better chance of more content from this channel. So um, I'd like to thank you again for listening. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Um, subscribe and email me at greenautisticprogressive uh, at yahoo.com in order to be put on the list for mail or for email list. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening to my first, uh, my debut uh, episode and I'll, we'll be back tomorrow night for the same thing. Uh, peace out for now.